launching the Nang Smile campaign. City refurbishes 35 street pavements in preparation for APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017. Da Nang attracts 28 investment projects into industrial zones. Hello, welcome back to DRT News. On September the 19th, a delegation from the Lao Overseas Liaison Committee and the State Commission on Overseas Vietnamese in Da Nang, led by Mr. Suvana Fuyavong, paid a courtesy visit to the city's leaders. Vice Chairman of the Municipal People's Committee, Chen Van Mien, welcomed the delegation. On behalf of the delegation, Mr. Suvana Fu Yafong thanked and appreciated the city's leaders' warm hospitality and blessed to tighten the friendly and cooperative relationship between the two countries in general, Da Nang and Lao localities in particular, bringing it to a new higher level. Speaking on behalf of the city's leaders, Vice Chairman Chen Van Mien briefed on the city's socio-economic development and the cooperation between Da Nang and Laos localities. Da Nang City's leaders have also paid many working visits to Laos, providing various supporting programs and projects. Since 2002, the University of Da Nang has received nearly 750 Laotian students. Currently, four Da Nang's companies are investing in Laos with a total investment capital of nearly 52.3 million USD. Export turnover to Laos in the first half of this year is estimated as 24 million USD, up by 56.8% over the same period of last year. On the afternoon September the 19th, Da Nang Department of Tourism held a press conference to launch Da Nang Smart Campaign, delivering the message, joining hands to develop Da Nang a more civilized, friendly and hospitable city. Da Nang People's Committee Vice Chairman Nguyễn Ngọc Tuấn attended the conference. The campaign commences from September to December 2017 in order to form and develop the civil official civilized communication habit and behavior, as well as friendly and polite attitude, especially those working in the tourism and related sectors. The tourism sector will produce the communication protocol and simple common phrases in such languages as Vietnamese, English, Japanese, Chinese, Korean and Spanish to help communicate with tourists. In addition, organize training classes for staff of restaurants, tourist spots, travel agencies, hotels, contributing to creating the good impressions for distinguished guests in the APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 and tourists coming to Da Nang City. According to Vice Chairman of the City People's Committee Nguyễn Ngọc Tuấn, so far the city has basically completed renovating the lighting system as well as repurposing the landscape and pavements of 35 streets in preparation for APEC. In addition, the city has also upgraded and repaired a number of buildings as well as embellished the urban landscape, cleaned up the vacant landlords and upgraded some other cultural works. At this time, important works serving the APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 have been basically accomplished, some of which were put into operation and ready to welcome visitors participating in the event. According to experts, with the scale and importance of the APEC Economic Leaders Week, Da Nang has grasped a tremendous opportunity to affirm its position domestically and internationally. According to the Municipal Department of Tourism, around 13,500 laborers in the hotel sector will serve the leaders, politicians and businesses from 21 member economies participating in the APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 in Da Nang. Currently, the city's tourism sector along with local accommodation establishments have trained the hotel staff on the communication culture, civilized behaviors, the polite and friendly attitude towards guests participating in the event, as well as domestic and foreign tourists coming to the city. The APEC Economic Leaders Week 2017 taking place in November 2017 has been considered as a great opportunity for Da Nang to introduce and advertise its image and services to the world. As expected, there will be around 15,000 domestic and international visitors coming to Da Nang during the event. 
Along with the investment in building new markets and upgrading the traditional markets, the development of a wholesale and retail network, and the formation of large commercial centers, specialized shopping streets, wholesale and retail stores for minimized and densely populated areas are recently the orientation of the Nang City. Accordingly, under the orientation of developing trade infrastructure to 2020, the Nang encourages the development of diverse types of business with the focus on the harmonious combination among traditional trade, modern trade and e-commerce. For wholesale trade, the Nang invests in the Kon Wholesale Market, the Huaming Wholesale Trade Center, Cattle and Poultry Market, Construction Materials Market, and expands the wholesale market for farm produce. Regarding retail trade, the city will invest in building 21 new trade centers, convenience stores, and large supermarkets at districts. According to the City People's Committee, since the beginning of this year, Da Nang has continued attracting 28 new investment projects into the industrial zones, with a total registered capital of over 552 billion dollars, eight of which are the foreign investment projects with a total capital of nearly $181 billion and one investment project into the Nang High Tech Park with a total investment capital of $50 billion, bringing the total number of the investment projects into the High Tech Park to six with the investment capital of $144 million US dollars in total. So far, Da Nang has approved the adjusted boundary map and announced the planning of Hoa Nhân, Hoa Ninh and Hoa Cầm Industrial Zones Phase number 2. Currently, the city is speeding up the implementation of procedures for investing in and building these new industrial zones. According to the statistics of the Da Nang Labor Union, currently, nearly 74,000 laborers are working in six industrial zones in the city. However, these industrial zones are still lacking nearly 5,000 employees. In fact, this situation has continued lasting for many years. The labor shortage is existing mainly in the sectors of manufacturing, garments, footwear, electronic assembly, mechanical and welding. Reportedly, these enterprises repeatedly post recruitment information, but the number of registered employees is only about 30% of the need. The problem set for the sectors, functional units and employers is that they have to offer more practical support and preferential policies towards well taking care of the employees' lives so that they can attract more and more laborers to work for the industrial zones. The Vietnam Information and Communication Technology White Papers 2017 was officially released by the Ministry of Information and Communications. This is an important publication which has been annually released by the Ministry of Information and Communications since 2009, aiming at providing the most accurate information and data on the status of ICT development in the country. This year's white paper provides statistics on the performance and development of the ICT sector covering IT applications, the IT industry, information security, telecommunications, internet, radio and TV and other related fields. The ICT white paper 2017 is printed in two versions, both in Vietnamese and English. The annual paper will also be published in electronic format. Minister of Information and Communications emphasized that this publication is especially important as it not only provides the basic statistics to reflect the ICT development status and is as an official data source for management activities, but also serves as a basis for foreign investors to assess and seek investment opportunities in Vietnam. On September the 20th morning, the City Department of Labor, War in Valis and Social Affairs, in coordination with the City Department of Justice, held a conference to launch the implementation of the 2016 Law on Child Protection. At the conference, delegates were introduced the main contents of the 2016 Law on Child Protection, such as the concept of the children's rights, the principle on realizing the children's rights and the prohibited behaviors. 
The focus was also paid on the rights and duties of children, child care, education, and protection, along with responsibilities of agencies, organizations, educational institutions, families, and individuals for exercising the children's rights. After the conference, the City Department of Labor, War, Invalids, and Social Affairs and the City Department of Justice will coordinate with relevant departments and agencies at grassroots levels to build specific plans for intensively propagating and disseminating the law on child protection in association with the implementation of the effective models in line with local practices. That's the end of today's news. Please remember to log on to drt.anang.vn for more news and updates. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.